Sophie Dana Balaba Dayo Hirivada Dadi Daya Hirivada Dadi Gopi Dana Balaba Dayo Hirivada Dadi Daya Hirivada Dadi Yasurna Nana Jaya Raja Janaran Jana Yasurna Nana Jaya Pajajana Ranjana Jaya 
Mune tira manachari Dayo kunjavi adi Daya kunja Tira Manachari Dayo Kunja Bi Adi Daya Kunja Bi Adi Dio Mishnu Pad Paramahansa, Hardy Bhattacharya, Oshtatara Sutta Sri Simad, His Divine Grace is Skan Founder Acharya, Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Shri Prabhupada. Dio Mishnu Pad Paramahansa, Hardy Bhattacharya, Oshtatara Sutta Sri Simad, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Maharaj. Shri Prabhupada ki, Ananta Kodi Vaishnavinda ki, Nam Chaya Shri Hari Rashtakur ki, Tamsika Ho Shri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Advaita Kadadhar, Shri Vasari Gopakini ki, Shri Shri Radha Krishna, Gopakini ki, Shamukunda, Radha Kunda, Giri Govardhan ki, Shri Brajabhumi, Shri Vrindavan Dhamma ki, Navadvipma Pradhamma ki, Ganga Yamuna Mai ki, Bhakti Devi ki, Tosi Maharani ki, Sisi Radha Marava ki, Shri Pancha Tattva ki, Bhagavan Narasinga Devi ki, Gantara Shimad Bhagavatama ki, Shri Prabhupada ki. Glory to the Sambha devotees, Glory to the Sambha devotees, Glory to the Sambha devotees, Glory to Guru Gauranga. Hare Krishna. This morning we're reading from Gantaraj Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 6, Chapter 3, entitled Yamaraj Instructs His Messengers, text number 26. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya 
evam vimrishya sudiyo bhagavati anante sarvatmana vidate kalu bhava yogam te me na dandam arhanti atha yadi amisham syat patakam tad api hanti urugaya bhada evam vimishya videyo bhagavat yanante Sarvatmana vidatate kalobhava yogam Te me nanandam arhantyata yadyam mishyam Syat patakam tarapi hant yurugaya vadha Evam vimrishya sudiyo bhagavat yanante Sarvatmana vidatate kalu bhava yogam Theme nadandam arant yata yadyamisham Shat patta kam tar api hant yurugaya vada Evam thus Vimshriya considering Sudhiya those whose intelligence is sharp Bhagavati unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead Anante the unlimited Sarva Atmana with all their heart and soul. Vidate, take to. Kalu, indeed. Bhava Yogam, the process of devotional service. Te, such persons. Me, my. Na, not. Dandam, punishment. Arhanti, deserve. Atta, therefore. Yadi, if. Amisham, of them. Syat, there is. Patakam, some sinful activity. Tat, that. Api, also. Hanti, 
destroys. Guru Gaya Vada, the chanting of the holy name of the Supreme Lord. Translation and commentary by His Divine Grace, Shri Considering all these points, therefore, intelligent men decide to solve all problems by adopting the devotional service of chanting the holy names of the Lord, who is situated in everyone's heart and who is a mine of all auspicious qualities. Such persons are not within my jurisdiction for punishment. Generally, they never commit sinful activities, but even if by mistake or because of bewilderment or illusion, they sometimes commit sinful acts. They are protected from sinful reactions because they always chant the Hare Krishna mantra. Report. <clears throat> In this regard, Srila Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur quotes the following verse from the prayers of Lord Brahma, Bhagavatam 10.14.29, Atapite Deva Param Bhuja Dvaya Prashada Lesha Nugrita Evati Janati Tattvam Bhagavan Mahimno Nachanya Eko Picharam Vichin Ban. The purport is that even though one is a very learned scholar of the Vedic Shastras, he may be completely unaware of the existence of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and His name, fame, qualities, and so forth. <clears throat> Whereas one who is not a great scholar can understand the position of the Supreme Lord if he somehow or other becomes a pure devotee of the Lord by engaging in devotional service. Therefore, this verse spoken by Yamarar says, evam vimshriya shudiyo bhagavati. Those who engage in the loving service of the Lord become Sudhya, intelligent, but this is not so of a Vedic scholar who does not understand Krishna's name, fame, and qualities. A pure devotee is one whose intelligence is clear. He is truly thoughtful because he engages in the service to the Lord, not as a matter of show, but with love, with his mind, his words, and his body. Non-devotees may make a show of religion, but that is not very effective because although they ostentatiously attend a temple or church, they are thinking of something else. Such persons are neglecting their religious duty and are punishable by Yamaraj. But a devotee who commits sinful acts, which he may do unwillingly or accidentally because of his former habits, is excused. This is the value of the Sankirtan movement. Translation again, considering all these points, therefore, intelligent men decide to solve all problems by adopting the devotional service of chanting the holy names of the Lord, who is situated in everyone's heart and who is a mind of all auspicious qualities. Generally, they never commit sinful activities, but even if, by mistake or because of bewilderment or illusion, they sometimes commit sinful acts. They are protected from all sinful reactions because they always chant the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. Oma Gyan Timurandasya Ginan Gina Shalakaya Chaksurimiritam Jainatas Maya Sigura Vain. Sri Chaitanya Manobishtam Shtapitam Jaina Bhutale Shwayam Rupakadamayam Dadantishva Padantika Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasari Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna So if you were listening carefully um, you'll understand there are many a number of uh, very important points in the verse and Srila Prabhupada's purport is explanation of the verse today. The first thing that comes to mind is the first point that Yamaraj is stressing. Evam vim rishaya shuriyo bhagavat inante which means that 
All problems are solved by devotional service. And he explains that devotional service, interestingly enough, as the chanting of the holy names of the Lord. So, in this age, that means chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. In the twelfth canto of this great work, Srimad Bhagavatam, it is stated, Krite yad yayato vishnu tretayam yajato makai dwapare paricharyayam kalo tad dari kirtanad a famous verse amongst kirtaniyas whatever result was obtained in sata yuga by meditating on vishnu in the treta yuga by performing agnihotras or sacrifices and in Dupura Yuga, by serving the Lord's lotus feet, which meant technically going to the temple, can be obtained in Kali Yuga simply by chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. So the conclusion is that to solve all problems of life, we simply need to chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Hare. It may seem almost too simple to the non-devotees, but they have a saying, nice things come in small packages. So. It's interesting to note that although the Lord has unlimited names, we hear that Anantashesha, from time immemorial, which means eternity, um, one of his savers or one of his services is to always be... Um, glorifying the Lord by chanting His holy names, and He has never chanted the same name twice. Since the beginning of creation, Anantashesha is chanting um, various names of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, which correspond to His personality, His characteristics, His pastimes, etc. So, there's unlimited names of the Lord. But we are instructed in that particular verse from the 12th canto, and other verses as well, and by the most recent incarnation of the Lord, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and our Acharyas, to chant Krishna's name. If all the names of God are absolute, why then do we chant the name of Krishna in the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra? There's a number of reasons for this. Actually, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur has illuminated the subject matter, enlightened us in the subject matter. He's described that although all the names of Krishna are absolute, Nama Chintamani Krishna, Chaitanya Rasa Vigraha, they're all non different than the Lord. Some names he describes, he uses the word primary, and other names he describes as secondary. Another way to say this is that some names of God are of the utmost importance and some of them may be of lesser importance. Of course, no name of God is, is less important, but the idea is that some names of God have more power and more potency than others. For example, in the Vishnu Purana, it's stated that um, 1,000 names of Vishnu are equal to one name of Ram. And three names of Ram are equal to one name of Krishna. <laughs> There's an example. Some names have more potency. The name of Krishna has full potency. And Bhaktivinoda Thakur writes that the secondary names essentially describe the greatness of God. Like Mahavishnu. Vishnu denotes Krishna, and his expansion is Narayan or Vishnu. And Maha means great, like we say Maha Prasadam. We have Prasadam, but we have great Prasadam. <laughs> great mercy when it comes off the altar from the deities. So Maha Vishnu. This is a name of the Lord which denotes his, his, his greatness. And Paramatma, the super soul. These are secondary names of the Lord. Or we could even go so far as to say we could be liberal and respect 
um, our Christian brothers and sisters and Muslim brothers and sisters and Buddhist, although they're impersonalists, voidists, but still. Allah means the Great One. al akbar Alhamdulillah. Is that correct? al akbar Alhamdulillah. Uh, God is great. Or as they say, there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his prophet. This is one mantra that I learned in the early 90s. <laughs> it got me out of some very difficult situations when I was traveling in Muslim countries. <laughs> I'd come in in non-devotional dress, you know, and they would be a little suspicious, you know, finding the saffron cloth in my bag and my neck beads tucked underneath and, you know, whatever. And they'd get a little suspicious. Uh, who are you? Al-Akbar Alhamdulillah. All right, you can go. <laughs> This is one good mantra. <coughs> and Buddha means uh, the... Actually, technically it means the intelligent one because we have buddhi, which means intelligence. As human beings, we're distinguished from all other created beings because we have buddhi, intelligent. Uh, Krishna says, one who reads this Gita worships me with his intelligence. So Buddha means the intelligent one or one who has utilized his intelligence to perfection and become enlightened. This is the real use of the intelligence to utilize it to become Krishna conscious. Or Buddha. So these are different names, uh, secondary names, Bhaktivinoda Thakur says, which indicate the power or the majesty or the awesomeness of God. Like today in modern society there's a word, oh that's awesome. So the awesomeness, not, no one could be more awesome than the Lord himself. But then he describes the primary, pr the first, most important names. He said like, Yashodhanandana, Gopijana Balaba, Girivara Dhari. He said these names are, have more potency because they reveal the very sweet and confidential nature of God, of his characteristics and his pastimes, in particular his pastimes in Vrindavan. The result of chanting such primary names of God, more intimate names of God, is very nicely described by Srila Rupa Goswami in his, his compilation of verses um, called Padyavali. Padyavali is a very wonderful book for shloka wallas. What's a shloka wala? Shloka wala likes devotees like Vashashika Prabhu, my godmother, who loves to learn and quote Sanskrit verses. His, his, um, his classes are just full of so many wonderful verses, following in the footsteps of Sridhar Prabhupada. He even quotes the verses to the non-devotees on the street when he's distributing books to show the authority of Krishna consciousness. So... One time I was at his home and I was looking around at his things in his room and I found his verse book. It was this thick. <laughs> and I was really impressed. Um, so Srila Rupa Goswami, who Mahaprabhu instructed to go through all the Vedic literatures and um, determine or conclude or prove that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Ishwara Parama Krishna Satchidananda Vigraha Anadir Adir Govinda Sarva Karana Karanam He actually went through all the Upanishads and Itihashas and the Puranas and took all the select verses to show who is the Supreme Personality of Godhead and then he wrote his Bhakti Shastras. So in doing so, he discovered many nice verses, which he just personally liked, and he wrote them down, or with his iron pen, put them on the palm leaves, and that became Patyavali, his personal verse book. And I carry that book with me, because he's Sri Chaitanya Manobhishtam. He's a special personality, because he understood the mind of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He understood the heart of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he understood the mood of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Number one, in establishing the chanting of Hare Krishna as the Yuga Dharma. And number two, the Mahaprabhu was in the mood, mood of Radharani, of Krishna trying to understand Radharani's mood of love for Krishna. 
So he wrote a very nice verse which describes the effect of chanting these primary names. Not the secondary names, with all due respect, but the primary names. What happens? He writes, May my respectful obeisances be given to the shoes of those wise entities who have learned the technique of liberating the poor creatures who are caught in the stinking mud of the ocean of material existence. On simply hearing the two syllables of Krishna's name, these devotees are overcome with bliss and their bodily hairs stand erect. So, chanting the secondary names of God awakens an appreciation for the awesomeness of God, which is part of our process. Actually, we worship God and Krishna in the mood of Lakshmi Narayan in full opulence, but culminating in pure devotion to the Lord. So it's important to chant the secondary names as well to appreciate how great God is. But chanting the primary names of God, his, his names in Vrindavan, are special because it awakens a deep love for the Lord. And of all the primary names of God, the most important is God's original name. What is his original name? We have to go to his hometown, Vrindavan. And there, his devotees call him by his original name. Therefore, it's the most important name, Krishna. And this is not just our biased opinion because we are Krishna Bhaktis. No, it's stated in Shastra. Uh, in his commentary on the Sri Vishnu Shahashranam Stotra, which is the thousand names of Vishnu, Sri Baladev Bijabhushana who was an illustrious disciple of Srila Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur, and to whom Srila Prabhupada dedicates his translation of Bhagavad Gita, to his Govinda Bhastya. He glorifies Sri Baladev Bidyabhushana. So in his commentary on the Sri Vishnu Shahasranam Stota, Baladev Bidyabhushana states very clearly that for Gaudiya Vaishnavas, the name of Krishna is the most important name. He says, quote, Of all the names of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna is the most important. As the Lord himself has confirmed by saying, quote, My dear Arjuna, Krishna is the most important of my names. There you go. From the Lord himself. Baladev Vidyabhasana gives a quote, he says, of all these names, Krishna. But then, to give authority to his statement, he quotes the Lord. The Lord says, My dear Arjuna, Krishna is the most important of my names. This is on a, in a commentary on the Vishnu Shahasranam Shrotra. I found that. So interesting. So, Krishna is the primary name of the primary names. And by his causeless mercy, that name, Krishna, which has several translations, the most attractive person. And Rupa Goswami also gives another translation of Krishna's name. Krishna means he who frees you from the repetition of birth and death. So that name is so important that it descends as a veritable incarnation in the age of Kali. Naratam says, Golok Prem Dan, Harinam Shankirtan. This Harinam Shankirtan composed of chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Where does it come from? Golok Prem Dan, Harinam Shankirtan. It comes from Goloka, it comes from the topmost planet in the spiritual world. So it's an avatar. What's an avatar? Avatar is not a movie. No, avatar is a word in Sanskrit which means he who descends from the spiritual realm, either the Lord or his representative, his pure devotee. The Lord comes in various incarnations, the Techamsa, Kolopumsa, Krishnashtu, Bhagavan Swayam, Indriya, Vyakalam Lokam, Vidayunte, Juge Juge, unlimited incarnations. His pure devotees also come. I was listening recently to a class of my godmother, Gorgovinda Maharaj. And he said there's two types of pure devotees who come from the spiritual world. 
those who, seeing the fallen condition and the suffering of the living entities in this world, come out of their own compassion. And there, there are those special souls who are chosen and deputed by the Lord himself, who receive an order from Krishna, you go to the material world and preach Krishna consciousness. One such personality is our beloved Sri Prabhupada. He recounted one time, in a moment of intimacy, how the Lord instructed him to come. And he said, but I'm not very used to austerities, he said to the Lord. And the Lord said, don't bother, you go down and just write, translate books on the science of Krishna consciousness, and I will arrange everything else for you, which he did. So this is the definition of avatar, one who descends from the spiritual world. So it's very significant to know that this primary name of the Lord, the, the original name, or the most important name, according to Krishna, comes as an avatar. More specifically, Kaviraj Goswami says, Srila Krishna is Kaviraj Goswami, author of Chaitanya Charitamrita, which was Srila Bhakti Sanana Saraswati's favorite book. Kali Kali Nam Rup, Krishna avatar, Nam Hoiti Hai Sharva, Jakata Nishtar. In this age of Kali, the holy name of the Lord, the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, is the incarnation of Lord Krishna. Simply by chanting the holy name, one associates with the Lord. Anyone who does this, meaning all of you, are liberated. Now, generally when an incarnation comes to this world, what does he do? That's a good question. Someone might ask. Well, when the Lord comes, like, what does He do? You know, a, a, a non-devotee, an inquisitive person. Well, all questions are answered in Krishna consciousness. This is the beauty of our philosophy. There's no if, ands, or buts, or maybe, or something. You know, quasi-spiritual. In our movement, we have the answers to each and every question. Perfect answers. Perfect questions. Perfect answers. So what Krishna does, he tells, as Radhana Swami always says. Krishna tells. <laughs> Krishna says, but Maharaj always says, Krishna tells. Krishna tells in the Bhagavad Gita, Paritranaya sadhunam, vinas chaya tudusquitam, dharma samsta panartaya sambhavam yuge yuge. To deliver the pious, one, to annihilate the miscreants, as well as to reestablish Dharma, the principles of religion, I myself appear millennium after millennium. So, if, according to Kaviraj Goswami, the holy name of Krishna is an incarnation in this age, we would expect to see the holy name as an avatar accomplish those three missions of the Lord when he comes to this world. To deliver devotees, to kill miscreants, annihilate them, just don't kill them, like annihilate them, that's like there's nothing left. And to reestablish principles of religion, like cleanliness, truthfulness, mercy, austerity. So does the holy name do that? Does the holy name, first of all, deliver devotees? Well, look in the mirror. Uh, the holy name not only delivers devotees, the holy name is so kind, the holy name makes devotees <coughs> out of those who have no qualification for becoming devotees. This is the special mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the Yuga Avatar. That's, for the most part, you and me, not our second generation. They're all, Prabhupada said, the devotees, the children of my, children of your children will be pure devotees, Prabhupada. They're taking birth now all over the world because there's an institution in which they can take birth in, become perfected, and help spread the chanting of Hare Krishna. This is the importance of our guru call. So take a look at a photo of yourself before you became a devotee and look at a photo of yourself now. Even though you may much be much older and not so attractive, if you compare the two, previously you looked like a Yamaduda. And probably said, now that my disciples have joined this movement and they've, they've put on, they shaved their heads or covered their heads with a sari and put on kuntimala and chanting, he said, they look just like they've come from Vaikuntha. So yes, 
Paritonaya Sadhana, the holy name rescues the devotees. And does the holy name annihilate the miscreants? Well, Prabhupada gave it an interesting interpretation on this, or angle of vision. He said that the holy name is so merciful that it doesn't destroy the person, but destroys all his bad qualities. By Chaito, Darpana, Marjana, by purifying the heart. So this is, therefore, Rupa Goswami says, Namo Mahabhananaya, Krishna Prem Padayate, Krishnaya, Krishna Chaitanya, Namne Gaur. There's no more merciful incarnation than you, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Papa said one time here in Mayapur, the Lord is, Lord Chaitanya is so kind, he doesn't take into consideration our offenses, he only takes into consideration our service. And does the holy name uh, reestablish religion? Well, like I said, religion, the, f the fundamental principles, the, f the foundation of religion, by which we can become purified and thereby awaken our love for Krishna, there's the principles of religion are cleanliness, truthfulness, mercy, and austerity, practically non-existent in Kali Yuga. Just a little bit of truthfulness by which people can appreciate this Krishna conscious movement. But by becoming a devotee, you become clean inside and out. You become truthful. You're always speaking about the absolute truth, Krishna. Mercy. We all practice mercy, the distinguishing characteristic or quality, sadhava sadhubhushanaha, of a devotee who, who has all good qualities or manifests all good qualities, is his compassion for the suffering of others. Other transcendentalists, with all due respect, they're more or less concerned with their own deliverance, but a devotee, he's not happy to go back to Godhead alone. He wants to rescue as many fallen souls as possible and take them back home, back to Godhead. So cleanliness, truthfulness, austerity, and mercy. No one's more merciful than a Vaishnava. Charya Vaishnava Sheva Naratam says, who's ever been delivered? Who's ever achieved liberation from this world without the mercy of a Vaishnava? So Vaishnava is the embodiment of compassion. This is all accomplished by chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. Hare so this incarnation, this Ma Mantra, appeared from the lotus lips of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu 500 years ago and slowly spread around Navadweep in Mayapur. Then Mahaprabhu spread it to South India. But his desire was that this holy name would go to every town and village of the world. Why? Because Krishna is the seed-giving father of all living entities. He's not just the god of the Hindus. All living entities, even the bugs and the germs, are Krishna's devotees. Uh, George Harrison said, everyone's a devotee of Krishna. Some know it and some don't. <laughs> George Harrison, Dr. George. Everyone's a devotee of Krishna. Some know it and some don't. So this holy name was meant to go beyond the borders of India and go to the Western world. And it's been very busy doing these three things since 1965. An important moment in history, 1965, when Prabhupada brought the holy names to the West. One time Prabhupada said in London, if it weren't for the Hare Krishna movement, you could not imagine how a deplorable condition this world would be in at this moment. Bad enough as it is, but if it wasn't for the chanting, the congregational chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare This is all due to the chanting of the Holy Name, which in every circumstance purifies everything. We used to sing on the street, one, in the old days. You know, we'd sing the mantra, but we, new devotees, so we'd sing songs sometimes to glorify the Lord. One of my godmothers, Mangalananda, was very expert at writing songs, and he'd come with us on the streets in Cleveland, Ohio, or Detroit in 1970, 1971, and he had one song. Changing the face of the earth, giving her people new birth, turn her eyes to the spiritual sky, telling us what life is worth. 
It's true. The holy name is changing the planet. All these trends that are popular these days, like vegetarianism and the belief in karma and uh, so many things, this is really due to the propagation of the, the Sankirtan movement, meaning holy names, prasadam, and Sri Prabhupada's books. People are trying so many complex and radical ways to solve the world's problems. Problems like war, uh, in environmental destruction, crime, um, mismanagement in government. But the key, according to this verse, where it says all problems are solved by the devotional service, which means chanting Hare Krishna, the key to the to solving these problems is chanting the holy names. I remember one time we were in London and Prabhupada called my godmother Bhagavan Das to his quarters and he said, I, I heard him say it, he said to Bhagavan Das, you should write a book on how Krishna consciousness can s practically solve all the problems of life, like crime and hunger and famine and mental problems and drug problems. He said like that. He said, you can call the book, what did he say? Um, spiritual Solutions to Material Problems. And Prabhupada himself would have discussions like that. There's the, the chief police, the chief of police in Chicago. Uh, I forget his name, is, you know, Officer Daly or something, I forget. And Prabhupada talked to him how chanting Hare Krishna can solve the crime problem. And, he, and the, the officer said, well, like, how? Because Prabhupada said when you're satisfied in your heart, you don't become greedy for things that you don't need. So if people chant, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare They'll be so satisfied spiritually within, they can live with the basic necessities of life. We could go on for hours how, you know, chanting Hare Krishna can solve practical problems in modern society, but I only have ten minutes left. Um, but this is a challenge for some skilled devotee author to, to write a book, Spiritual Solutions to Material Problems. But from the absolute platform, we can say that the process of Krishna consciousness, chanting Hare Krishna, eventually does solve all problems of life because by chanting Hare Krishna, you go back home, back to Godhead. <laughs> and whereas this world is temporary, of suffering and ignorance, the spiritual world is just the opposite. It's eternal, full of knowledge and bliss. Where this world is characterized, Krishna says, an intelligent person, he can perceive the evils of this world, which Krishna describes as birth, disease, old age, and death, but these things are conspicuous by their absence in the spiritual world. So really, we can say with full authority that by chanting Hare Krishna, it's the panacea. Panacea is a powerful word. It means a solution to everything. And they've been looking, you know, for two things from time immemorial. The fountain of youth and the panacea, the solution to all problems of this world. That's chanting. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare. One single stroke, Prabhupada said. One stroke, all problems solved. One time a devotee asked Prabhupada, when we get back to, to the spiritual world, do we remember the time spent in the material world? So Prabhupada paused and closed his eyes and thought for a moment. He said, yes, you will remember your sojourn through the material world like a bad dream, like a nightmare. And he said, just like sometimes you wake up at night because you had a bad dream, a nightmare, and your tendency is not to go back to sleep for fear of having the same dream again. So Prabhupada said, you know, Krishna says, Punar Janma Nividyate, having once attained my abode, you don't come back. This is one reason. You compare the two. Well, I'm not going back there. I'm not going back to New York or London or Sydney or Kiev or Moscow. Now that I'm in Sri Vrindavan Dham. So the whole world can benefit from this primary name, this original name of God. Therefore, we should distribute it. 
Chanting means more than japa retreats and kirtan melas. That, that's nice for devotees, but really this holy name descended for a specific purpose, that is to flood this planet, every town and village, with the chanting of Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur had one initiation lecture in 1931. He said, this distribution of these holy names, this preaching, will do good for the preacher and for the people who hear the preaching. So we have a powerful tool to extradite ourselves from the entanglement of material existence and save the world. And the idea is that this by going out and distributing this holy name, it has a domino effect. You know, a domino effect. I don't know. Probably don't play dominoes. I don't even know where how this expression came about, but the domino, those little black, you know, wooden pieces, and they have little white dots on them. If you line them all up, there's an interesting phenomenon. You push one, the domino effect is all, all the dominoes fall down. So the domino effect of any devotee according to their means, according to their abilities in preaching Krishna consciousness is that it makes other devotees. There's a beautiful verse underlining this principle in the uh, Brihad Narayan Purana. That's a nice Purana. Purana means very old. It's very old. We usually quote Hadir Nam, Hadir Nam, that type. But I found another very beautiful verse in the Brihad Narayan Purana which uh, underscores um, how the holy name will spread, the domino effect. And that verse is as follows, and you will love it. Chanting the holy name constantly can purify even the most fallen sinner. And after he becomes purified, he in turn is to be counted amongst the saintly persons who can purify others by his association. Isn't that nice? I love that verse. Um, so all this is accomplished by chanting. Therefore, although we sing many bhajans and many names of the Lord, mainly we should chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Hare. It's more powerful than all the other holy names combined. This is just understanding Refining the, science, refining the science of chanting. All names are important to us, but we've been initiated into the Maha Mantra. It's the mantra we've been given by our Guru Maharaj, and it takes us to Goloka Vrindavan. In his Krishna Shandarbha, uh, Srila Jiva Goswami writes, and I quote, Krishna is the original name of the Lord, and all of their names are simply part and parcel of the original name of Krishna. The original name Krishna is more powerful than the other names and the result of chanting the name of Krishna is greater than that of chanting all the other names of the Lord together. So when we hear these glories of the holy name, it's meant to increase our shraddha, or our faith. It's meant to help us develop Nam Ruchi so that when we sit down, we chant as Sachinanda Swami tells us with the three Ps, posture, pronunciation and prayer. Prabhupada said, sit properly. <laughs> and pronunciation, not too fast to finish, but to savor and glorify the Lord. And with some feeling. We may not have bhakti. We can be honest. But we have appreciation. Guru Maharaj, Mahaprabhu, Radha Krishna have delivered me from the ocean of material existence. We have that appreciation. Eventually through the process, appreciation turns into affection. And affection evolves into love. So we're on the right path. We're on the path of pure devotional service. One time Prabhupada said, all my disciples are pure devotees. Because we're on the path of pure devotion. So these discussions are meant to increase our faith in the holy names. And none of anything I've said is not an exaggeration. These are not statements by Shastra or Acharyas to trick us into chanting Hare Krishna. They're transcendental truths, and we have to have faith. It's so important. The amount of faith you have will determine the value, the benefit of your constant chanting. Shkanda Purana encourages this faith. 
The Skanda Purana says, quote, I see that Kali Yuga is like a black poisonous snake with a gaping mouth and fangs. But please be un unperturbed, my dear devotees, and listen with faith. Once the holy name of the Lord is chanted, it is like igniting a forest fire which will burn to ashes the poisonous snakes within the forest. So in order to advance properly in Krishna consciousness, we have to be conscious of the unlimited good fortune we have inherited. What is the most valuable possession we have? What our Guru Maharaj has given us? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna. Sometimes we just have to step back for a moment and analyze what we have. Because very often we make the mistake of taking our good fortune for granted. Familiarity breeds contempt. All too often we're lamenting for what we don't have. But better to stand back and appreciate what we do have. Remember how fortunate we are to have been blessed with this chanting of Hare Krishna, which will not only solve all problems, it will bestow upon us love of God, which is the ultimate benefit of chanting. So Rupa Goswami advises us, again in his Padyavali, how to appreciate this good fortune. He says, O oh Lord, just as a miser continually collects, counts, and remembers his money, in the same way, let us devotees continually collect, count, and remember your holy names. Sometimes devotees lament, they get discouraged, they get depressed, but no matter how hard it gets, no matter what, what's the common saying, life throws at you. We can always be inspired by remembering the list of our good fortune. Like they have what's called a wish list. Or the karmas are so crazy, like the ten things you should do before you die, you know. Go to Disneyland, and visit the pyramids of Egypt, like, what? So we have our list. We're on the path of devotion. Adoshradha, Tata Sadhu Sangha, Tabhajana Kriya, Nartana, Riti Syat, Nista, Ruchi, Bhav, Prem. We have a, we have a, there's road signs. And we want to know where we are and what's the next step, you know. And we have the means to achieve that. To extradite, we have the tools to extradite ourselves from the jungle of material existence. We have been blessed with certain items that are very dear to our heart. So we have no reason to lament. Like Raghunath Das Goswami, he made a list of his good fortune. And his list should be our list of good fortune. Like he says in his Manashiksha, famously, what is his list? O mind, I grasp your feet and beg you with sweet words. Please throw away all your pride and develop intense and extraordinary love for my spiritual master. Braja Bhumi, the people of Braja, the Vaishnavas, the Brahmins, the Gayatri Mantra, and the holy names, and the transcendental shelter, which is the youthful couple of Braja. This we all possess, being members of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness by Srila Prabhupada's grace. So we have to sometimes just take a little time off and reflect. That is the advice of Bhaktivinoda Thakur. He states the following. The devotee should make it a regular practice to spend a little time alone in a quiet place and concentrate deeply on the holy names. He should utter and hear the name distinctly. It is impossible for the jiva to single-handedly avoid and overcome the illusion of distraction. But by the mercy of the Lord, however, this is accomplished with ease. And what is that mercy? The name itself. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Certainly Bhaktivinoda Thakur was one such person who had that shraddha, that faith in the name. In chapter one, yeah, chapter one of Harinam Chintamani, he writes, My dear Lord, 
my only hope lies in the limitless nectar of your holy names. And what type of chanting does he recommend? He recommends the type of chanting that Mahaprabhu recommended. Kirtaniyat Sadahari. Always chanting. Or as Prabhupada paraphrased it. If you've got time, chant Hare Krishna. That's also an instruction of Srila Prabodhananda Saraswati in his Chaitanya Chandamrita. He says, O Sadhu, if you cannot suddenly renounce this dreamlike world, then day and night meditate on Vrindavan. Worship Vrindavan's king and queen and always chant their holy names. So we should arrange things, we should arrange our life in such a way that you know, we don't become overburdened with unnecessary things. And so our whole life revolves either around chanting the holy names or distributing the holy names to others. This is the International Society for Christ. This is our business. To get up in the morning and chant, to join the congregation of devotees and chant, and somehow assist the Sankirtan movement. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to go out and practically distribute the books of the Hain. You can raise children. That's a long-term investment, but absolutely required. The next flood of ecstasy will be our children and their children. Or you can build beautiful temples that after people read the books, how do I practice Krishna consciousness? I don't know what to do. Come to the temple. Or you can open restaurants. Or you can just have an amhat in the middle of nowhere and invite your neighbors over. There's so many varieties of ways for sannyasis and vanapastis and grihastras and Brahmacharis to, to preach Krishna consciousness. But this is really the mood of Iskand, all together now. <laughs> all together now. Sankirtan means the complete glorification of the Lord, and everyone should be engaged under good leadership to know the importance of chanting and our responsibility as the modern day representatives of the Gaudiya Vaishnava tradition to loudly broadcast Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama. This is the advice of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. In his purports, in his purports to the Sri Chaitanya Shikshamrita, he writes, In the teachings of Sriman Mahaprabhu, there are only two principal instructions. Develop a taste for chanting the holy names, and display compassion for the fallen souls. I'll read that again. In the teachings of Sriman Mahaprabhu, there are only two principal instructions. Develop a taste for chanting the holy names and display compassion for the fallen souls. So we are blessed with the original name, chanting the original name. And this formula will save us, and it's so powerful it can save the world. One time, Prabhupada said in London, um, one day scholars will note how this Hare Krishna movement saved the world in this darkest hour. And what does it mean to be saved? Brihad Narayan Purana states, the extraordinary result derived from chanting the transcendentally empowered and eternal name of Krishna just a few times cannot be satisfactorily described. Even by persons like Lord Shiva or Lord Brahma, so marvelous is the holy name that immediately upon chanting, the chanter attains the supreme destination. And that means all problems solved. Hare right, Krishna, thank you very much. Shira Prabhupada ki, Gautara Srimad Bhagavatam ki, Guruk Prindan Harinam Shankirtan Yadya ki. Hare Krishna.